Welcome to Kansas Ag Report with your host, Brian Hallman. Welcome to Kansas Ag Report. I'm Brian Holman, and here's our lineup for today's show. In Ag News, we'll take a look at local and national headlines affecting Kansas farmers. In our Ag feature, Ken Rogers sets in for us and talks with Natalie Anderson about Ag in the Classroom. And inside Kansas Ag, Kansas Soybean talks to us about the 2017 Kansas Soybean Expo. And Farm Bureau tells us about the 2017 Excellence in Teaching Award winners. And in news you need to know, we get our weekly update from the Kansas Livestock Association. We'll back at last week's market activity with the guys from Paragon, and we'll let you know about important events coming up around the state of Kansas. Glad you could join us. Closed captioning brought to you by The Soybean Checkoff. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. KansasSoybeans.org. Ag Risk Solutions. Experience, knowledge, integrity. Your crop insurance solution, Ag Risk Solutions. Kansas Wheat Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Kansas Livestock Association, supporting our members' business interests to meet consumers' demands. KLA.org. Here's our national headlines for this week in Ag News. The Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City says a slow but steady rise in financial stress in the farm sector continued in the third quarter of this year. Nearly 30 percent of bankers reported a significant deterioration in working capital from a year ago, about twice the number at the same time in 2015. Bankers also reported a significant decline in farmland values. The decrease in the third quarter was the sharpest year-over-year reduction in the value of each type of farmland throughout the 10th district since the mid-1980s. The USDA has raised the already record 2016 U.S. corn and soybean production estimates. As of November 1st, corn is seen at 15.2 billion bushels, up 1% from October and 12% higher than 2015. Soybeans are projected at 4.3 billion bushels, 2% above October and 11% more than last year, with an average yield of 52.5 bushels per acre. The Humane Society of the United States scored two big victories over agriculture in this election, an animal rights ballot initiative in Massachusetts, which was backed by HSUS, passed overwhelmingly with 78% of the vote. It not only bans confinement of farm animals in the state, it also prohibits the sale of pork, eggs, or veal from animals raised in confinement in other states. The other big victory for HSUS was the defeat of Right to Farm ballot initiative in Oklahoma. The measure lost by a 60 to 40 margin. In local news, the Kansas Department of Agriculture is seeking individuals to participate in an agricultural trade mission to AgroFarm Russia. AgroFarm is an international exhibit to be held February 7th through 9th in Moscow and will feature all major aspects of productive animal husbandry. The goal of the mission is to provide an opportunity for Kansas purebred beef cattle producers and allied industry to continue developing relationships in Russia. For more information on the trade mission, including instructions on how to apply, call 785-564-6704. Kansas 2016 corn production is a record forecast at 713 million bushels, up 23% from last year's production, according to USDA's NAS. Area to be harvested for grain at 4.85 million acres is up 24% from a year ago. Sorghum for grain in Kansas is forecasted at 258 million bushels, down 8% from last year. Area for harvest at 2.9 million acres is down 9% from 2015. Soybean production is a record forecast at 192 million bushels, up 30% from last year. Area for harvest at 4 million acres is 4% above 2015. Governor Sam Brownback called for more availability of higher ethanol blends at a fuel station promotion in Garnett. Sandra's quick stop celebrated the addition of ethanol blender pumps that allow the station to offer E15, E30, and E85 ethanol fuels to its customers. The station used grant money from the USDA and several Kansas groups to add the new pumps. The grant program that provides assistance to add the pumps is administered by the Kansas Department of Agriculture. 
Up next in our Ag Future, we sit down with Kevin Thielen from Kansas Beef Council to talk about global beef demand. You're watching Kansas Ag Report. Please stay tuned. This segment brought to you by Kansas Livestock Association, supporting our members' business interests to meet consumers' demands. KLA.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O H L D E seed.com. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Imagine having someone help you pick the best corn hybrids for every field on your farm. Your oldie representative can combine your data with his data to offer a field-by-field prescription. Contact Oldie Seed today at 877-692-4555. Biodiesel made from sustainable resources is diversifying our fuel supply. This year, biodiesel will displace over a billion gallons of fossil fuel nationwide. It's making our economy stronger and our communities healthier. It's working here and across America. Get biodiesel going in your community. Visit americasadvancedbiofuel.com. You need a partner that you can count on to be there for your business. Providing a depth of understanding to risk management issues so you don't have to. A knowledgeable support team located in your area, delivering products and services to make you more successful. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. And welcome back. And this time of the year is a time that we give thanks for a lot of different things. And we're going to talk about your opportunity to give thanks by showing you support the future of agriculture education in Kansas. Joining us is Natalie Anderson with uh, the Kansas Foundation for Agriculture in the Classroom. And uh, Natalie, as we uh, talked, uh, an opportunity for folks, if, if they want to uh, show their support by giving thanks, there's an opportunity coming up very soon. That's right, Ken. Um, we are excited this year. We are joining the National Day of Giving, um, known as Giving Tuesday, on November 29th. That comes the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, kind of follows in the footsteps of Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Um, is really the kickoff to the holiday giving season. So we're excited to join that, that movement this year. So what, is there something special? Is there an extra match or just an opportunity to really bring awareness of, uh, of doing that? Maybe after you spent a lot of things on Black Friday deals, <laughs> right. but, but really maybe uh, doing some things paying forward. That's right, yep. So the, the goal for us in doing this is to really just raise awareness for ag education in the state of Kansas. Um, we are 100% donor funded, um, and so we're hoping that on Giving Tuesday to raise an additional $10,000. And so we would just challenge folks um, that kind of hold ag education near and dear to their hearts to consider giving and, and help us reach more Kansas teachers and students this year. We'll talk more about what's going on with the program in just a little bit, but also uh, maybe let's talk uh, as we get ready to wrap up the year. You've had another very busy year. Yes, uh, we actually just had our annual meeting last week and celebrated the, all the accomplishments in 2016. Um, we had our very first summer conference in June um, in Salina and kicked that off for Kansas teachers, um, featured the Peterson Farm Brothers, um, just providing a lot of great resources and workshops for teachers and, and really spreading our, our mission. Uh, talk about how that has changed. You know, a lot of times we thought uh, everybody knew a lot about agriculture, but even here in Kansas, we're finding even some of our rural communities uh, still need to know a little bit more about what agriculture means to Kansas. That's right. I think that's something that's surprising to us often is, you know, agriculture is the number one industry in the state of Kansas, and yet even in our rural communities, um, the students often aren't, aren't familiar with uh, where their food comes from or their clothing. And, um, and so, you know, it becomes even more important as, as um, children become more uh, disconnected from the farm that we provide that, that bridge and bridge that gap. Um, with our teachers and our resources. We're talking with Natalie Anderson with the Kansas Foundation for Agriculture in the Classroom. We'll talk more in just a moment. 
This segment brought to you by Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919. KFB.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. And welcome back. We're talking with Natalie Anderson with the Kansas Foundation for Agriculture in the Classroom. I'm Ken Rogers. And uh, Natalie, uh, one of the things we talked about earlier in the segments was about uh, uh, Giving Tuesday. And we want to talk about uh, maybe how easy it is to participate in that. Yes, we hope we made it very easy for folks to participate. Um, the way that we are encouraging folks to donate is to go to givinggrid.com um, slash KFAC Giving Tuesday. Um, actually, probably easier is to just go to our website, ksagclassroom.org, and right at the top of the page there is a, a link to be able to provide a, an online donation, or you can simply donate um, through the mail. Um, the other way is if, if uh, we would just encourage everyone to just share that with their family and friends, share on social media, and help us spread that message. Okay, let's get back to talking more about what's going on. You just celebrated uh, your annual meeting. Mm -hmm. Get that all kind of out of the way. Uh, one of the things that, that makes this all work is not only you and Kathy, mm -hmm. the director, but you have a lot of great volunteers, a lot of great businesses and industries mm -hmm. that want to see this successful. That's right. Yeah, we are, um, as I mentioned before, 100% donor funded and obviously are very, very thankful for the generosity of those donors that support us year in and year out and, and really see the value of joining our mission of connecting classrooms to Kansas agriculture. Um, you know, next year in 2017, we're going to be celebrating our 35th anniversary and um, we're just really excited about how far we've come in 35 years, all of the agribusinesses and individuals that um, really uh, support our mission and have been on board with us from the beginning. And um, we're just excited about the, the resources and the workshops we're going to continue to provide in 2017 for our Kansas teachers. Now, make sure we understand this is this this curriculum that works mm -hmm. is is K through 12. It's you know I'm sure a lot of the focus is we want to get them started young right. in the grade school, but mm -hmm. Really, that education goes almost even beyond just high school, but, but we, we focus really on, uh, on uh, as kids are beginning to, to learn those skills. That's right, yeah. Um, we do have curriculum for K through 12. Um, a lot of our focus is elementary. We do offer a lot mm -hmm. of uh, uh, lesson plans and resources for our elementary school teachers and students, but of course, you know, it's important that it's carried all the way through, and so um, we, have, we have something for all Kansas teachers, uh, regardless of grade. It's very interesting being involved. We could do something as simple as the state flower, the sunflower, to mm -hmm. something as complex as, as animal husbandry. Mm -hmm. and, and it's really kind of neat to be able to get in there. And, and, and a lot of those, even young students, can help be the teachers as well because they have experiences on the farm. That's right, yep. And it's a lot of fun for them to be able to engage with their classmates that maybe don't have that experience, and even for the teachers too. So all right, Natalie, again, what we want to focus on is remind folks if they want to help with the future of agriculture education around the state of Kansas a big day is coming up yep giving Tuesday November 29th uh, following Thanksgiving and we just encourage everyone to consider giving a donation and supporting us in 2017 and more folks want information about Kansas Ag, Ag classroom how can they do that uh, they can visit us on our website ksagclassroom.org all right Natalie Anderson has joined us with the Kansas Foundation for Agriculture in the classroom for uh, Kansas Ag Report I'm Ken Rogers. The producer-funded Kansas Wheat Innovation Center was built to get improved varieties into the hands of farmers faster. Kansas Wheat, farmers advancing their future through wheat genetics research. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. I will take action against herbicide-resistant weeds. I will know my weeds, and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand 
and I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. I will take action, this time for all time. Kansas Soybean Expo 2017 will be January 11 in Topeka. The Kansas Soybean Association organizes the annual event with checkoff funding from the Kansas Soybean Commission to coincide with the Topeka Farm Show. Thanks to the checkoff, there will be no registration fees again this year. Space is limited, however, so only those who pre-register by January 4 will have guaranteed seats at the luncheon and be eligible for the early bird prize. The event is at the Maynard Conference Center Registration and exhibits open at 8.30 a.m. The program will be from 9 a.m. to 3.45 p.m. A reception with association and commission leaders will follow. The opening session will offer checkoff partner updates from the IGP Institute and Soy Transportation Coalition. Then participants will hear from K-State experts about the ongoing battle with weeds and soybean breeding. Tracy Streeter, director of the Kansas Water Office, will speak at the luncheon, and the association will conduct its annual meeting. Afterward, the Kansas Soybean Yield and Value Contest winners will be recognized. Then Daryl Holliday from Advanced Market Concepts and Country Futures will discuss the economic shifts in U.S. and world agriculture. Find the full agenda and pre-registration form at kansassoybeans.org expo on the web or call 877-KS-SOYBEAN. The Kansas Farm Bureau Foundation for Agriculture and Kansas Foundation for Agriculture in the Classroom are announcing the 2017 Excellence in Teaching Regional Award winners. This award is given to exemplary teachers who integrate agriculture into their classroom. This year's honorees include Angie Baker and Barb McCaffrey, a fourth grade teaching team at Blue Stem Elementary School in Leon. Janet Holden, a family and consumer sciences teacher at Northern Heights High School in Allen. Margaret Meyer, a sixth grade math and science teacher at Hayes Middle School in Hayes. And Andrea Berzer, a first grade teacher at Ellenwood Grade School in Ellenwood. Baker and McCaffrey integrate ag into their classroom in collaboration with their school's greenhouse and animal farm. They also planned and created Butler County Ag Day. Holden focuses on educating her students about the nutritional value of foods, methods in which they are raised, ethics surrounding rendering practices, and how to be a better consumer by understanding what we cook and eat. Meyer focuses on student-led research through her district's one-to-one -one iPad initiative as she integrates agriculture-related concepts into her classroom. And using Twitter, Berzer and her class connected with a first-grade class in inner-city Chicago. All five teachers will receive their choice of $600 towards attending the 2017 National Ag in the Classroom Conference in Kansas City or a $200 check to purchase agriculture education supplies for their classroom. This segment brought to you by Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919. KFB.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed. Find them on the web at oldeseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. I will take action against herbicide resistant weeds. I will know my weeds and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand and I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. I will take action, this time for all time. You need a partner that you can count on to be there for your business. Providing a depth of understanding to risk management issues so you don't have to. 
a knowledgeable support team located in your area, delivering products and services to make you more successful. The producer-funded Kansas Wheat Innovation Center was built to get improved varieties into the hands of farmers faster. Kansas Wheat, farmers advancing their future through wheat genetics research. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Biodiesel, made from sustainable resources, is diversifying our fuel supply. This year, biodiesel will displace over a billion gallons of fossil fuel nationwide. It's making our economy stronger and our communities healthier. It's working here and across America. Get biodiesel going in your community. Visit americasadvancedbiofuel.com. Imagine having someone help you pick the best corn hybrids for every field on your farm. Your oldie representative can combine your data with his data to offer a field-by-field -field prescription. Contact Oldie Seed today at 877-692-4555. Members are encouraged to provide input during committee and council meetings at the KLA Convention November 30th through December 2nd in Wichita. Policy approved by members during these meetings will guide KLA leadership during 2017. Agendas for the meetings include many issues important to Kansas producers. The Animal Health and ID Committee and Stock Growers Council will discuss supporting permanent identification of cattle persistently infected with BVD. Members of the Natural Resources Committee will hear a report about a federal rule that may impose new challenges for ranchers who use prescribed burning as a management tool. Attempts to repeal agricultural tax exemptions will be discussed by members of the KLA Tax Committee. The Natural Resources Committee and Stock Growers Council are expected to consider policy supporting the reinstatement of Kansas deer hunting permits that can be transferred from a landowner or tenant to another person. During the KLA Cattle Feeders Council meeting, members will discuss live cattle marketing and issues related to price risk management. The group will hear updates from the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the National Cattlemen's Beef Association and CME Working Group, Cattle Facts, and KLA's Price Discovery Task Force. Resolutions advancing through committee and council meetings require final approval from the general membership at the end of the convention. Take time to be involved in the process as broad input makes for stronger policy. Good morning. I'm Eric Osterhouse with Paragon Ag Advisors. It's now been a couple of weeks since the election and it looks as if the markets are seeing some of the money that was on the sidelines flowing back in. It's been interesting to see the grains work themselves generally higher in the last several weeks, despite seeing the U.S. dollar trading to multi-year highs. Honestly, this has a few of the commodity traders scratching their heads. Typically, a strong dollar correlates to being bearish for the grains. However, there are no guarantees when it comes to trading, and for whatever reason, the grains seem to have disassociated themselves from the moves in the dollar. We'll see how long that lasts. In the meantime, basis on the grains has largely solidified and has many believing that we may have put the worst of the basis moves behind us. We have seen futures for corn and soybeans trade back to the high end of the range in recent days, but we've yet to make that big move through resistance. There's also been a lot of grain that has changed odorship over the last 60 days, as producers have either needed the cash or simply were backed into a corner to sell due to storage rates and dump charges. It's important to remember that one of the first steps for a significant rally is that a majority of the grain has to be out of the farmer's hands. I feel we're a lot further along in this regard than we have been in the last several years. Having a plan for some re-ownership may be wise. If you do have any questions, give us a call at 888-452-8751. Have a productive day.
Closed captioning brought to you by The Soybean Checkoff. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. KansasSoybeans.org. Ag Risk Solutions. Experience, knowledge, integrity. Your crop insurance solution, Ag Risk Solutions. Kansas Wheat Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Kansas Livestock Association, supporting our members' business interests to meet consumers' demands. KLA.org. Well, that's our show for today. I hope you'll join us each week for more news and information about agriculture in the state of Kansas. I'm Brian Holman, and thanks for watching. Biodiesel, made from sustainable resources, is diversifying our fuel supply. This year, biodiesel will displace over a billion gallons of fossil fuel nationwide. It's making our economy stronger and our communities healthier. It's working here and across America. Get biodiesel going in your community. Visit americasadvancedbiofuel.com. You need a partner that you can count on to be there for your business. Providing a depth of understanding to risk management issues so you don't have to. A knowledgeable support team located in your area, delivering products and services to make you more successful. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com.